Yo, you guys, this is Blacklist of the Abyss, and you're watching my review for Brynhildr in the Darkness, a.k.a. Kiwa Guro no Brynhildr, a.k.a. Goku Koku no Brynhildr, episode 5. Alright. And, um, I, I could have had this review up earlier, but I was busy watching WWE Extreme Rules, so that, that, that just took high priority. Alright. But, um, now I'm doing it, so it's, it's, it's still... Not as early as it could have been, but still earlier than last, the last couple weeks. So hey, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Um, but um, as far as this episode goes, right off the bat, right, <laughs> right off the bat, we get jokes about Kazumi's chest. All right, that was freaking hilarious. I <laughs> maybe it's mean of me to say that, but I love it. I love when Murakami makes fun of her for that. And he t he told her that in order to have a booby thief or something. You have to have boobs like Coltery does, all right. <laughs> but he, he didn't get a chance to finish his sentence because because Cosme kicked him in the face, all right. <laughs> and then she ended up defending herself by saying that, oh yeah, well at least her nipples are prettier, which <laughs> okay, <laughs> that that's interesting. Uh, that's that's I, I don't I don't even know what to say. I don't, I don't know what to say about that. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'll just move on. <laughs> um, yeah, after that, there was more that, there was more comedy with Kana because more and more comedy was just treating her like an object and saying, like, oh, man, I, I forgot to put her away. Um, and then after that, Cosme went back to teasing Murakami, which was funny because Murakami ended up announcing this stargazing trip that the club was going to go on, and Cosme <laughs> Hugged him from behind and told and told him that there are better things a boy and a girl could do together. <laughs> and, then, and then she licked his face. <laughs> it's, just, it's just hilarious. These two are literally perfect together. Right? Cosme is the best character, hands down. Okay, people can say Mako all they want, but for me, Cosme, best character. All right, she always will balance. I don't see anyone who can surpass her. All right, she's just too good. She's just too good. All right. Her and Murakami have perfect chemistry together. Neko goes out of her way to not have chemistry with him. Kazumi has perfect chemistry with him. They're like the perfect comedy duo. All right, they need to they need to have more screen time together because it's hilarious watching these two. All right. Um, speaking of speaking of watching those two, <laughs> you see what I did there? Um, every everyone else there was watching them, and they, they were all blushing. And Neko actually got jealous a little bit. Or at least I'm going to assume it was jealousy, and she accidentally used her magic and broke a table. All right. So, yeah, apparently that that happens. Oh yeah, she did say she can't control it well. She's like, didn't she say like she? It's they're lucky that she didn't break Murakami's arm when they arm wrestled. So yeah, I guess it's not really anything new. Oh well. Uh, she almost she almost dropped the whole. She used the M word, magic. All right, she shouldn't have done that. Luckily, Kothri's an idiot. Well, she's not an idiot. She's just she's Kothri. That's that's what she is. She's Kothri. All right, uh, but um, she didn't catch it. So, yeah. Um, after that, we got oh, they left. Kothri left to go home. Then I need to pick whether I'm going to do it in English or Japanese because my Japanese R's are not good. Um, whatever. Um, I'll just do it in English for now on Kotori. There we go. Sounds stupid, but whatever. I'll do it anyway. Better than my bad Japanese pronunciation. Kotori. Whatever. Um, don't know. Oh, yeah. So, she leaves. Then, uh, Neko takes Kanan to the bathroom. So, Murakami's alone with Kazumi. We get more, we get more, like, boob talk and virgin talk, which was, <laughs> which was funny. And it ends with Murakami asking... Um, asking uh, Kazumi, I just forgot her name, even though I just said it. Um, ask, she ends up asking Kazumi about Neko's memory loss. It turns out she doesn't have any memories from when she was a kid. All right, so he's he, he's he's starting to put two and two together. He's starting to put the whole Neko equals Kuroneko thing together. Okay, um, which he already thought that, but he's been trying to convince himself otherwise. But it's everything's just too perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and he, and it, it happens on the way to the mountain too, or wherever wherever it is they were going for the stargazing thing, right? Because Nako 
there are, it's true that she lost a lot of memories, but there's some memories she still has. It's just they're in her unconscious. So she unconsciously remembers. So it's almost like, it's like a deja vu type of thing, all right? She has the memories, she's just not conscious of the fact that she has them, all right? So she remembered stuff, the stuff that happened in, the, like, episode one with, with like, Vega and out here. I remember I mentioned it. I remember I mentioned the whole, uh, if you've seen Aquarian Aval, all right? If you've seen Aquarian Aval, then you know about Altair and Vega. I, I remember mentioning that in like the episode one review or something like that. So yeah, she's mentioning stuff about them and like this triangle, this star triangle or something triangle. All right, so she's remembering things that she shouldn't know. All right, and Murakami hears that plus the whole thing about her not having her childhood memories, and now he's really starting to think. Nako equals Kuro Nako. They're, they're the same person. All right. He's really starting to think that now. Um, he just needs the moles as proof, but he always forgets to look whenever he gets a chance. Though at this point, he's only had one chance, but who cares, whatever. Um, it's only two, technically. Who cares? Um, another thing that happened on the way to the mountain or whatever, wherever it is they were going was that <laughs> Kana kind of joins the harem there. It's, it's like it's officially a harem now. We've got Neko, we've got Kazumi, and now we've got Kana because Kana blushed. But Murakami was carrying her, so now she she she's she's kind of in the, she's kind of in the harem, not really, but kind of kind of I'll, I'll add her in. Why not? Why not? Because because my word is just totally official. Um, but yeah, so that's something to mention, I guess. She's finally starting to care a little bit about Murakami. Um, now, once they actually do get to the star place. Um, you see Kotori, she's looking at Saturn's rings, and she mentions that she wants to meet aliens, and she's actually met one before, so that's interesting. That's interesting, that should come up later. Is that is it like the same alien that Neko met when they were a, a, when they were kids, and they were on their way to go see the alien? Is it is it one of those green things that's inside the harness? It's like, what, like what, I'm curious as to what alien specifically she, I, I'm curious to get more details about that. So hopefully that happens at some point. Um, but while she's looking through the telescope, her hair parts and Murakami sees her harnessed. Okay. And right when Murakami sees the harness, Kana gets this forecast at this foresight of Kotori standing over Neko's corpse. Alright. With this with this creepy with this creepy smile on her face. Alright. And it's important to note that what what Kana saw was not Kotori. I said I was going to do it in English. What she saw was not Kotori killing Neko. All she saw was Kotori standing on top or over top of Neko's corpse. Okay, that's what she saw. All right, so she's she's making assumptions that she shouldn't necessarily be making. Um, but anyway, that leads to Murakami confronting her. All right. And it was actually kind of funny because uh, she she turned into Mio from Walker A. Romans or or any other cliche female anime character. All right, she she started off with that crazy creepy smile, and then all of a sudden she changed to that eh like that that high pitched Japanese girl noise that they all that they all make in anime. <laughs> and it was kind of funny because of that that drastic change that she made. All right. And she did it again when she she didn't realize that the other girls were witches either. And she thinks it's a coincidence for all of them to be at the same place. <laughs> and the others like in complete disbelief. Like she 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 actually thinks that? <laughs> like and you, like their eyes were all shaded black and everything. It was hilarious. All right, this scene was hilarious, all right? Um so <laughs> so Cosby ends up questioning her, right, and asks her to show her the show them her magic. Right, and it ends up being teleportation. She switches places with Murakami, and she hangs up after one use. So, <laughs> so now they're thinking, like, wait a second, this girl is not very impressive. All right, how is it that she's gonna kill Neko? All right, and like, apparently they all forgot about harnesses. All she has to do is make Neko hang up, and then just beat her. <laughs> that's that's all. That's all she has to do. All right. And that's that, but apparently they forgot. Um, whatever. Um, 
then they end after that they end up spending some time enjoying the stars and the moon and stuff like that. And by the time they leave, Kana's foresight changes to Murakami dying instead of makeup. All right, and after this, we see this brief scene of Kikako. All right, she's walking. She has harness in her hand. She's going after Shino. Shino Lee gets out the way right in the nick of time. This cat warns her because she can like talk to animals or something. She's like the la she's like the land version of Aquaman, all right? And the, that's that. Um, I don't know how Kikako keeps finding her. She must have some. Tra uh, she doesn't have any tracking abilities. It's just that cannon thing. But she keeps finding a way to find Shino. I don't know how she does that. Oh well, who cares? Um, anyway, after that, we should we see the next day, and um, we see that. Uh, Murakami, she gets to the observatory early so that he can talk to Khan alone. Alright, this is where we end up talking about some of the facts and the foresights, right, to see if we can figure out what's actually going on here, okay? So, fact number one all the, the, these killings, whether it's Neko or Murakami, doesn't matter, it takes place at the lake, right? The lake that they end up being forced to go to because that's where Shino ends up going and Neko wants to go save her, alright? So, there's that. It happens at the lake. Number two, Kotori was smiling, right? And as we learn later in the episode, Kotori smiles whenever she gets nervous. Okay, so that doesn't necessarily mean it's like a, well, I mean, it is a creepy smile, but it doesn't necessarily mean that she was like the one behind it, all right? And Murakami notices that. He notices that. And he's saying, well, if she was really out to kill Neko and Kana and Kazumi, There'd be no need to enroll in the school to do it. She just show up like Saori did and kill him. Show up like Kikako did and kill him. All right, well, Kikako didn't kill them, but you know what I mean. Uh, all right, so Murakami notices that. All right, and the third fact that's incredibly important you need to remember that is that Neko was tied up somewhere. All right, that is important. All right, I can't tell you why it's important because that would just be a spoiler. All right, but it's important. All right. Um, I don't exactly, I remember, I remember how this situation ends, but I don't remember how they get to that point. So, like, I remember, I know, I can tell how this thing is going to end, but I don't remember what happens at all, like, before that. Like, in bet in between this episode ending and this arc, I guess, or this, this, this feud with Kigako, this, this, yeah, this feud ending, in between there, I'm, I'm, I, I don't really remember much. I just remember how it ends. Um, but yeah, I won't say anymore because if I say anymore, I might end up accidentally spoiling something. Um, but all the pieces are there for you to figure out how this is going to work. So I, someone in, in Crunchyroll said that, oh man, I, it's so obvious how this is going to turn out. She, she's going to shoot some beam and then it's going to end up hitting her when, when Cold 3 switches. I'm like, no, no. Okay, no, no, no. No, 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 no. That's that's not no. Just stop. No, all right. No, it's no. It it it's not that obvious. I mean, all the pieces are there. It's just not obvious. It's not obvious, but the pieces are there. Okay, so yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, what ha what ends up happening after that? Uh, Shino ends up giving them a call. That's when Nako leaves to go out to the lake. She just rammed a table into Murakami in order to get him out the way. Um, so Nako leaves. Code 3 follows him for some reason. I don't know why she followed her. Does she care? Does she know Shino too? Does she, like, care so much? Like, I, uh, I thought that was interesting that she just left too. Uh, but whatever. She leaves. Nako gets back up, or Murakami gets back up and leaves after getting an earpiece and some stuff from Kazumi. Um, yeah. They get there. They find out that it's Kikako who's after, after Shino. Um, she is, we get the official confirmation that she is the double A plus, uh, which that was sent out there, so it's not Code 3, so if there are any doubts, there shouldn't be any anymore, um, Code 3 is just Code 3, she's not double A plus, she's certainly not double A plus, she might not even be B, she might not even be B, alright, <laughs> like, like they said, she's lackluster, um, well, not really, but whatever, um, 
yeah, Kikako shows up and she kills Shino. That's that's how the episode ends. All right, uh, they had very good, very convenient censoring there. <laughs> Shino landed right where the boards were to block it. Uh, but yeah, that's that that's it for the episode. Um, and overall, I'll give this episode an 8.5 out of 10 because there was some really good comedy in the beginning, plus just a lot of stuff. I guess I was, I guess I'll say a lot of stuff. You get the confirm the confirmation that Cult Three is not evil. She's not the double A plus. The double A plus is Kikako. Plus, we get this mystery surrounding her. What's going on? It's just interesting. Just trying to think of what's going to happen. I technically have probably given you too many details. I might have even spoiled a couple people accidentally. So if I did, I'm sorry. I might have given too many details there. Um, too many hints and everything. But yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's it. I don't want to just ramble now. So yeah, this episode gets an 8.5 out of 10. That's that. Free, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>